The Acura MDX is always the first thing people think of when they are looking for a luxury 3 row crossover. That is why it has been the best seller in its class for more than 5 years in a row. Here we are with the latest 2025 Acura MDX Type S Advance. Is this MDX still the class leader with competition like the Lexus TX and the Audi Q7? Let's go ahead and dive right into this refreshed MDX. Before we get into the rest of the video, let's talk about the pricing and the trim level. Acura slightly revised this for 2025 because first of all, all the MSRPs are about $1,000 more than it was for the 2024 model. And there is no more base Type S anymore, it is only the Type S Advance. But Acura did add in an A-Spec Advance trim level to go right above the normal Advance. This one here is a Type S Advance, and with certain options, this one comes in at $76,100 US dollars. That is about the same price as an Audi Q7 55 Prestige, so let's see what you get for the money in the MDX. Let's begin with the exterior design. The MDX still has the signature diamond pentagon grille now in a frameless look, and you get a lot of functionality and gloss black down below. As far as lighting is concerned, this will carry over from 2024 despite a darker tint. So you get a chicane daytime running light, the signature jewel-eyed LED headlights, fog lights down below, and an LED turn signal. I think this really fits the MDX well. The MDX Type S has these beautiful 21-inch alloy wheels with red Brembo brakes that are even more exposed due to the new design. I think Acura did a phenomenal job designing this new wheel, and it's even more special because this is currently the only Acura product with 21s. Moving around to the side, you're going to get this gloss black trim around the wheels and more gloss black on this molding at the bottom. You get more gloss black on the window surrounds, and you get these continental cross-contact tires that are self-sealing. The Type S has these very prominent red Brembo brakes, and you get fully loaded mirrors in gloss black that have heating, blind spot monitoring, auto dimming, and power folding. Moving around to the back, the Type S is going to have these quad exhaust outlets and a diffuser with a piece of this gloss black trim. The taillights are going to carry over from the 2024 model year, except now you get a smoked finish to them. You get an LED brake light, an LED reverse light, and an LED turn signal with incredible detail. One thing they could have added is an animation. But how about we check out this interior and see what kind of changes Acura made for 2025. This MDX Type S is nearly $75,000, so I do have some high expectations for this car. Starting with the door panel, this is pretty typical for an MDX. You get soft touch plastic at the top, weathered through the middle part, wood trim on the upper part with three parts of memory seats, all of your controls in the normal area, and a little bit of storage down below. You have the Type S door sills. You get premium carpeted floor mats. However, you can get Type S branding if you pay extra. And let's talk about these seats. This is finished in a dark blue premium Milano weather color. You get Type S in your headrest. You get suede in your bolsters. And I love all of the white contrast stitching and the piping. This MDX Type S will have 16-way power adjusting seats. It's not the best in the class, but it's definitely going to be enough for most people. But let's talk about the rest of this interior. The steering wheel is very nicely weather wrapped in a very high quality weather with perforations on the side and a flat bottom for Type S duty. You also get Type S branding right here, and the steering wheel itself is heated and power adjusting. You have controls on this side for all of your volume controls, phone call, and everything for the center infotainment system, and you get some safety controls on this side. The gauge cluster is going to remain unchanged. 
So it's obviously going to be able to change with the drive modes. So if you change different drive modes, that is going to adjust the gauge cluster just a little bit. And then you also have the live action of the car in the center here. So if I turn on the hazard lights, you're going to see the hazard lights turn on in that little car. If I turn on the headlights, you're going to see the headlights turn on. So I think that is really, really cool because some people want to know what it's like on the outside of the car and what other people are actually seeing. So that is a good way to do it. Now, everything else is pretty simple. You can change the layouts of the gauge and you actually do have maps built in. So if you go to gauge layout, you can go to advanced, which is what we have right now, or crafted. I think advanced looks a little bit nicer because Yes, it is more advanced. You can scroll through everything on the on the right side, including your oil life, your tire pressure, and the SH all-wheel drive. And then you also have the seatbelt readings, which I don't think was available for the 24 model year. You do also get an adjustable head-up display up here. Now let's talk about the materials. So you're going to find some stitched leatherette on the upper dash. You're going to find open portwood trim up here. And then you're going to find a lot of gloss black through the center area. You might notice that the center console area looks a little bit different, but that is for later. For now, let's talk about the storage. You do have a wireless phone charger right here, and there is no palm rest anymore so that you don't have to control the trackpad. You have two cup holders right here. You have a pretty deep center console. I don't know if it's class fleeting. I think that belongs to the Lexus TX but you get two USB-C ports in addition to the ones right over here. And it is nicely felt line, so nothing will get scratched. Additionally, there's a more shallow cubby right here to keep pens or a little bit of money. But now we can talk about the center console area. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the trackpad has been deleted for this 25 model year. So I don't think a lot of people like the trackpad that much. I know my parents didn't really like it when they owned a 2023 MDX, but that really frees up the space here. We get a lot more storage for anything. Right now I put the key fob right there and I think it looks a little bit more clean. Everything else is basically the same because now we have a touchscreen. Now let's talk about the climate controls. So. This is going to be three zone on every MDX model. So it's going to be dual zone up front and one zone in the back. You can control your fan speed up here. And then you can also play around with the rear settings if you would like. You also get heated and ventilated seats and you can turn on auto. So it will adjust to whatever the temperature is outside. Right now it decided that two stages of ventilated seats are good enough. You also get massaging seats. By holding down on the massage button, you can go ahead and see a bunch of different massages come up. There are about eight different massages, and I think these have some pretty normal names compared to other brands like Jeep and Ram. They have some pretty interesting names like Waterfall and Rock Climb. This is actually a very good massage sheet because Acura has only been doing this for three years. They released it with the 2022 MDX Type S. So they haven't really had that much time to innovate or redesign these massage units. But these are really good. They really get into your back and it, does, it doesn't just gently push at your back. It really gets in there and I like that. Of course, if you don't like that very much, you can tone down the intensity if you choose. So I think this is a pretty good way to relax on a long road trip. And as you could see, my finger was touching the screen because, like I said earlier, no more trackpad. And to make it better, Acura actually updated the infotainment system by adding built-in Google Apps and providing a lot of new welcome features to the software. First of all, a lot of things carry over from the 2024 model year. First of all, the background and the fact that we have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a split-screen setup, Wi-Fi hotspots and maps built in. As you can see here, we have a lot of Google apps built in. We got the Play Store, we got the Google Assistant, we have Google Maps, 
And also take a look at how fast this infotainment system is. This is easily class leading, even better than Audi's infotainment system and Lincoln's SYNC 4 infotainment. So you do also have Alexa that carries over from last year's model. And then you have a whole app built in for ambient lighting. So if you turn on the headlights, I know it is kind of hard to see. You can choose the different ambient lighting that you want. You guys probably can't see, but it will appear right around here. Of course, that's going to be way easier to see in the dark, and it will only work when you have the parking lights or the headlights on. I like how they have a special app for that because you would have to go into the vehicle settings before and dig around for that. I think Actor did an amazing job on this infotainment this year, and it's definitely going to last for a while. I just hope that they bring it to the RDX and the TLX sometime soon. And of course, we can't forget about the backup camera. So when you put the car in reverse via the electronic shifter, you're going to find a very high resolution backup camera that pretty much carries over from last year. You do have active trajectory, and you can also choose between a wide and a narrow view. And then when you put the car in drive, and then you push the camera button on the right stock, you will find uh, a front view along with the 360 degree view. And if you push it again, then that will give you a wheel view just in case, let's say that you're in a tight parking lot and you don't really want to scrape the curb. This is where it is useful. And then you push it again to take the cameras away. And there you have it. Taking a look up top, you're going to find a large panoramic sunroof that can tilt and open the front part. Let's move on to the passenger side and see what it's all about. The door panel will have the same blue leather, open pore wood, and the three-person memory seats as the driver's side. And the seats will also be the same, with the same leather and suede combo, type S branding in the headrest, heating, ventilation, massaging, and 16-way power adjusting. Inside, you're going to find a lot of gloss black and a lot of nice leather reds, which actually looks quite good. There's a little strip of open pore wood and leather red on the dash. There is three-person memory seats, like I just mentioned, and that is actually very useful. And inside the glove box, you're going to see that it is felt lined and that there is plenty of space. Also, the cover of the glove box is wrapped in leather reds. Also, there is a power outlet down here, which is something you don't get that often. Let's take a look at the back seats. The door panel looks really nice because you get blue leather, stitching, open pore wood, sunshades, a lot of storage down below, and yes, that is one of the 31 speakers of the Bang & Olufsen sound system. They basically put this anywhere they could find, including all over the door, in the pillars, on the dash, and believe it or not, even on the roof. But back to the second row. As you can see in the middle here, you get a third zone of climate, including vents, three stages of heated seats, a power outlet, and two USB-Cs down below. The middle seat in this car is very special because it isn't like anything else. First of all, you can pull that tab to pull it down and make a center console. You have two cup holders and a little bit of storage space in the center. You can also completely remove it to have the full captain's chair experience, just in case you want to customize your second row. Now let's take a look at the third row. Getting in is extremely easy because you can do it with the push of a button. This relies on the battery, but don't worry, if you pull on the lever lightly, it's going to do the exact same thing. The third row is actually pretty disappointing for a luxury car. You don't get that many amenities and it's really not that comfortable. First of all, you get a plastic armrest over here with one cup holder on each side. The window is pretty normal sized, and you get a USB port on both sides, which is also going to be on higher trim levels. The seats are very upright, and you don't get vents back there, so it's going to be a little bit toasty. But the cargo area is also a very important part of the MDX, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. To open it up, you're just going to kick your foot right under the middle of the car. That's going to open it right up just like that. Behind the third row, you're going to get 16.3 cubic feet of cargo room, which is a pretty good figure for the class. There are a lot of special things that you could do, and I'm just going to show you a couple of them. 
There's a hook and a power outlet on this side, and a button so that when you walk away from the trunk, the trunk will automatically close. But let's talk about this part down here. So you can see that it's made of plastic, which is really not a very fancy material. But that is because if you are just got back from the beach and you put your boots on it, it's not really going to mess up anything, and it's very easy to clean. But if you're just getting groceries and you don't really want it to slip around all over the place, you can actually take it out, flip it around, and it's going to be carpet. That is a super smart way of designing this car. And they know that families are going to be doing messy activities together. So a plastic side is the perfect thing. Under floor storage is rare enough, but you can actually take out this whole thing or you can just put it at the bottom here so that things don't slide around. Also, you could line it with plastic and put a bunch of water in there if you want a mini kiddie pool. But let's get back to those dimensions. When you fold down the third row, it will go from 16.3 cubic feet to 39.3. And when you fold down the second row, that's going to give you about 71 cubic feet, which is pretty good for the class. If you are keeping tabs on that, that is slightly more than the Audi Q7 and way less than the Lexus TX. There are also multiple ways to close up the trunk, but the most special way is by pushing this button and slowly walking away from the trunk. It will detect that the key fob is no longer under there, so it's going to close right up. Under the hood, the MDX gets two different powertrains and you can choose between front wheel drive or super handling all wheel drive. Most MDX models will have a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 with 290 horsepower. But if you choose to spend a little bit more, you'll get the Type S with a 3 liter twin turbo V6 with 355 horsepower and 354 pound feet of torque. All of that is mated to an upgraded 10 speed automatic transmission. And the fuel economy is also pretty good at 17 miles per gallon in the city, 21 on the highway, and 19 combined. Premium fuel is recommended, but it is not required. The MDX is in one of the most competitive segments in the luxury auto industry, so let's talk about the competition. The MDX has a lot of competitors, and some of them include the BMW X5, the Mercedes GLE, Lexus TX, Genesis GV80, Lincoln Aviator, Audi Q7, and the Volvo XC90. Those are quite a few, but surprisingly, the MDX is the best in the segments. You get a really good price, you get a very good amount of space, and you get a pretty good amount of performance, especially with this Type S model. I think that this MDX would be a solid choice, but if you really need more space and you don't want to go to the Escalade or another full-size SUV, the Lexus TX is a great choice. As far as dimensions are concerned, the MDX measures in at 198 inches long and 78 inches wide. Well, that is going to wrap up today's review on this 2025 Acura MDX Type S. I have always liked Acura MDXs, and the 2025 refresh made me like them even more. From the styling upgrade, to the touchscreen inside, to the 31-speaker banging off some sound system, this is almost the perfect car. Of course, there are some things that they could work on, like the third row, or the amount of space you get as a maximum, maybe they could increase that a little bit. But maybe if you have a family, like two or three children, and you want to have a little bit of sportiness in your lifestyle, pick up an MDX Type S, or look at the Audi Q7. I think you'll be happy with what you get. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.